Hey everybody, this is John Corelli. I'm going to give you an average guy's point of view of some things that are going on during, during the COVID outbreak. Um, average guy, average intelligence, probably an average amount of education. I have a four-year degree in history. I minored in political science, and that was a long time ago. Graduated in 1993 from uh, Metro State College here in Denver. Now, what's happening during this outbreak? A lot of craziness. Right now is, uh, I believe today is April 19th, and uh, we have a president that is telling people to liberate their states um, as if he's not the boss of the country. But he's having them, quote-unquote, liberate states that uh, have Democratic governors that might just, just might disagree with him, God forbid. So he's having kind of the, the wacky Tea Party types that think the economy is shutting down, and it is, and maybe that's not a bad thing if we think about it, but that's maybe a discussion for another time or later this time. But anyway, uh, things are getting a little crazy. They're not super crazy, and it's kind of sad that they're getting this crazy when we're only about a month into this, right? Um, I know not everyone's as well off as I am. I live in an apartment with my two kids. It's a two-bedroom apartment. My older son is 22. He has autism, uh, pretty severe autism, so uh, he, he, needs to, he needs assistance. He lives with me, and my 15-year-old also lives with me. He's being a bum and sleeping, even though it's the afternoon, but that's okay. School's out. And I'm also fortunate. I got a good tax return. I have some savings. I have a 401k I can dig into if I need to, and I even have, you know, the stimulus money is coming in, and I am also getting paid because I work in a school, um, and so I'm getting paid through May, so I'm very fortunate. I'm in very good shape. As a matter of fact, I'm getting my groceries delivered, which is quite a luxury. I just washed my apples and oranges with soap. That's weird. <laughs> and they're drying on the rack of the dishwasher as we speak. A little weird a weird time. It's a time to be reasonable though. <clears throat> the old saying, cooler heads will prevail, that's what we need. Cooler heads. So everybody calm down, follow some simple rules, and we'll get through this. Having said that, um, Ellen DeGeneres is kind of on the hot seat right now. Uh, I think a week or so ago she said that being, uh, being quarantined feels like prison to her. And she said she'd been in the same clothes for 10 days, which, okay, I get the depression hits the rich. Depression doesn't discriminate. It hits the rich, it hits the poor. I understand that, but it's harder when you're poor. Can we agree on that? Um, Ellen, you could have changed your clothes. You could have showered. You probably have a hot tub and a swimming pool on your, what looks to be a, quite a palatial estate. Um, you know, and, and uh, to call it a prison really really, I think, embarrassed her. I, I hope she has taken it back. I don't know if she has, or at least realizes how good she has it. She's n worth nearly half a billion, with a B, billion dollars. Uh, she's worth $490 million at the time that I'm recording this. Um, and, and herein lies some of the, uh, how do I want to say it? I'm sorry about the dead air. Maybe I'll have my son edit this. Maybe I won't. Maybe you need to see this as real, realistically as possible. How I talk, how I think, how this is pretty much unscripted. Not pretty much. This is unscripted. There's no paper in front of me. I got my glasses here. I don't know why, because I'm not reading anything. <laughs> when I put them on, I look like Homer Simpson when he tries to look intelligent when he puts on his glasses. So that's no good. Anyway, um, back to, to Ellen. And j just the, the fact that... Oh, in, in addition to her saying that that statement that just didn't sound empathetic. Uh, in addition to that, she is also apparently, she's still running her show out of her house like a lot of talk show people are. And she is using, I don't know if they're non-union, but they definitely are not from her staff. She's using members to help her along with the, all the technical things that go into running a show out of your home. She, she's not using her staff anymore. And in addition to that, the, the, her staff was had their pay cut by 60%. And talk about a time when you don't need that. You're already out of work and you're getting your pay cut 60%. Um, to her credit, from what I've read, uh, Ellen has given a million dollars to COVID to, to fighting this, this pandemic. 
But I was like, how about another million dollars maybe to your employees? Because that's, I would think that would cover them for a month or two. You got 30 employees, uh, that, that 30, let's see, 30 times 30 is 900, right? So if you did, gave those employees 30 grand each, that's a lot. That covers more than a couple months than, as it should. Um, that's less than a million dollars. So something to think about. Um, what else is happening? Uh, here's my thing about Ellen, and this is where I, I, this is where I'm actually in my mind. I'm comparing Ellen to Donald, Donald Trump, and I think this is this is a metamorphosis or an evolution that happens to a lot of famous people. They get to a certain status, and it's not only money and it's not only fame. It's about being figuratively blown by every person you come into contact with. I said it, I once said, I've said several times actually to my friends, I compared to Plato's cave theory, but I just read a synopsis of Plato's cave theory. I was wrong. That's not what Plato's cave theory is, is about. You should read it. It's an interesting little synopsis. If you just literally Google Plato, Plato's cave theory comes in. It goes to a, it's called philosophizers with a Y. And it's, it's a pretty good take on, on for the na average guy like me, how to understand what Plato's cave theory is about. Um, but my, my original definition or understanding of Plato's, Plato's cave theory is you're in this place and you don't know anything outside that place. And that's how it kind of feels with Ellen right now. From my understanding, she, she I believe, was born and raised in Louisiana, came from middle class upbringings. That's my understanding. Um, and then I have nothing but respect for her. The, the, the next 20, 30 years of her life are amazing. She made it in a man's world. You look at comedy now, and it's still a male-dominated uh, business, stand-up comedy. And I do stand-up, not very well, but I do it. I've been doing it about 11 years, and it's still a male-dominated uh, industry. And she did it when hardly any females did it, and she did it well. And she made a living at it, and of course she made her her show, and she came out. She was one of the first famous gay people to came to come out, um, and then then you know she had the success, has a successful talk show. Um, she's an amazing woman. She really is. But over the last twenty to thirty years, I have to ask myself, how much are people around her just genuflecting and telling her she's the best and you're infallible and I. You changed my life. And you hear that enough, boom, boom, over three decades? You might start to think you're, you're above uh, maybe being empathetic, maybe having understanding of the common man. I think that can happen. That's where I compare her to Trump. I don't think she's a sociopath like Trump. I think she's much kinder. But I think she has maybe lost her way and maybe doesn't understand that uh, you've got people depending on you for a living. And just because you get a couple weeks off in your prison, <laughs> which i got to check the square footage on it. I can't imagine. I've probably like a 10,000 foot square prison, 10,000 square foot prison. <sighs> you know, people are going to roll their eyes as they should and be critical as they should. When you've got half a billion dollars and you're not willing to spend one five hundredth of it on the staff that helped get you where you are and supports where you are and what you do, you, may, you might need to take a look in the mirror. Like I say, that's the only comparison I can make to Trump. Trump Trump's been in the bubble way longer and he's a sociopath. Ellen's not, but Ellen needs to look and see, maybe get, take a reality check. All right, that's my time. Um, I'll try to get this on YouTube soon so it's still relevant <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll have my son edit it maybe I won't like I said earlier um, I, I like to do this this is my new thing not too many old guys on YouTube that I know about so I'm just trying to create a YouTube channel I'm trying to just uh, start a dialogue about stuff I mean and that's something I think we need right now a lot of us are quarantined and uh, we and we need to keep dialogues going whether it's through YouTube Facebook or FaceTime or Zoom or whatever you're doing, uh, we need that humanity. We need to keep it going. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all healthy. I hope your relatives are healthy. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.